Hello YouTube and welcome back to another Dare to Game video. Today we're playing Elden Ring and I'm going to be showing you the top five best straight swords and I'm going to show you where to get them. So we're going to be discussing all sorts of stuff and uh, this is obviously going to be very similar to all the rest of my weapon videos for Elden Ring. Uh, on this account I've got all the stats maxed out so you're not seeing any stacking from specific stats in comparison to others. These are all uh, ranked very very closely together and they are all uh, upgraded to their max level so the comparison is very equal and this is what I consider to be the most definitive list of the best swords. So basically straight swords are going to be for your knight and men at arms type characters, someone who's using a sword in one hand and a shield in the other, or like I often do a sword in one side and a uh, sign on the other side. So with that in mind, uh, all of these are going to be rated based on how much damage they do, what their uh, guarded damage negation is, and uh, that type of stuff. I didn't really take looks into uh, consideration because then the list would be very different, but I will briefly talk about it. So the first one we're going to be looking at, number five, is the Rotten Crystal Sword. And so this one is a decently cool looking weapon. It's not very realistic looking and it's got a really long uh, hilt given the length of the blade, but it definitely does great damage and has a lot of perks to it. So this is an end game weapon as really all of these on this list have a right to be since they have, you know, such good damage stats. Uh, but this one is one that you really can't even acquire until the end game. So uh, let's just look at the stats first. This one has a, a total max attack power of 856, making it an, just an excellent weapon. And it also causes a scar Scarlet Rot buildup, so that's great because the more hits you get on someone, the more Scarlet Rot you do to them, and then they're obviously taking damage from that, and Scarlet Rot does a lot of damage. So it's got a lot of advantages to it. Uh, its average guarded damage negation is 35.3. Stats to use it aren't really high. It requires 13 strength, 15 intelligence, 10 dexterity. It's pretty dang simple to use. It, it, like, given the fact that you find it in a very late game location, it's uh, interesting how low the stats are to use it. So it's actually a really, really good weapon that most characters can use. As far as uh, where to find find this goes, you're going to have to come all the way up here so you can see uh, the mountaintops of the giants. We actually have this second region here, the, uh, I forget what it's called, but it's where you find the Ordina liturgical town. The only way to get there is through the uh, hidden path to the Halig tree, so you're going to need to find the secret medallion, one half of which is located over here in the Castle Soul, and the other one is located over here in the village of the Albinorix. Uh, once you have those two halves, you just go to your grand lift of rolled, and instead of coming up here, you use the secret medallion and it'll bring you out here. And then once you cross through here, you make it all the way to the back uh, to the Ordina liturgical town, and that's where you'll be able to find your way through to the Halig Tree uh, region. And once you get there, you have to make your way down to the Elfail Inner Well is the closest uh, fast travel point. Uh, or side of grace, I should say. And then, uh, which is right down this hallway, you can see it through there. Uh, then you come down into this room and you uh, have to come up over this tree route and there are three decently high level and kind of pretty difficult to defeat crystal entities. Basically what you do uh, is you lure each one of them out by just getting up top and kind of slightly aggroing until just one falls you. Get them out here and kill them one at a time. It's much easier to take care of them that way. And then this sword can be found in that chest. Uh, so that is where you get the rotten crystal sword. Like I said, it's an excellent weapon and out of all the straight swords, it takes the number five spot. All right, and so number four, we have the golden epitaph. And now this one is a very unique looking sword. Uh, it would not be a great weapon just given exactly what it looks like so you can see it doesn't have a sharp edge on it i mean i guess you could count the arms of the person on it to be kind of pokey as well as the things on the front but uh the side of it is just a straight up bar it's so calling it a sword is very very generous i would say but it does look pretty cool and if you're going for that fashion souls vibe uh it works rather well for that plus the stats on it are actually pretty damn good so if you uh just look at the stats here for the attack power we have a max attack power of 872 again we're maxed all the way up uh and a average guarded damage negation of 23.3 so it's slightly lower than the last one. In fact, it has the lowest uh, guarded damage negation on this list, uh, but it does have a really good damage stat. As far as attributes required to use this one, again, pretty low. Strength of 12, dexterity of 10, and faith of 14. So this one works decently early in the game. You can actually get this one. I mean, the region, depending on how fast you progress through, it might be a little bit later before you find this region. But when you do, uh, it's a pretty easy weapon to wield. And like I said, it's definitely a great one, and that's why I take the number four spot. So if you want to find this sword, you have to make your way up to the capital region. So you can see we're at the uh, up in the capital region. We make our way to, over to the Oriza Heroes Grave, uh, which is right here on the map. You can see we just come down through this little valley here. So if you want to get to it, come up to this fork in the road, take this road down under the bridge, and it'll lead you right to it. So that's the way to get to it. Once you're in here, uh, it's actually decently early in. There's this well, it's actually right next to the site of Grace. Um, 
there's a room here. You're going to need a stone sword key to unlock it. Inside, there's going to be these two beasties, which I've already killed because they, they got the drop on me. And then inside here, you're going to find it on, yeah, it's this corpse over here in this corner, this uh, kind of charred up burnt corpse. You'll find it on him and then you'll have it. So like I said, decently easy to find, especially if you're already to the capital or if you can make your way there decently quickly. And it has excellent stats. So that is the fourth best straight sword in the game. Let's move on to number three. All right. And so for number three at the middle spot, we have probably the coolest looking one, at least in my opinion on this list, just because it's got the most traditional style to it. It actually kind of looks like Jamie Lannister's sword from Game of, uh, like the TV show Game of Thrones. It's got about the right proportions, hilt and cross guard wise, as well as blade length. It's obviously a little bit different given the blue material right there at the base of the blade. Uh, other than that, it's definitely one of my favorites because it's got a more natural and realistic look. That being said, of course, if we look at the blade cross section, it is way too wide. This thing is, again, more of a club than a sword because uh, those bevels are ridiculous. You'd be clubbing your enemy to death, not slicing them in half. Trust me, uh, swords like this, that's way too thick. But anyway, uh, it does still look pretty decent uh, and compared against a lot of the other ones in the game, it's got a more grounded uh, look. So I really like the way this one looks. But it didn't get its ranking based on looks. So if we look at the stats, this one has a max attack power of 879. So a little bit higher than the last one and definitely a very, very good weapon. Again, we're maxed up to plus 10. Uh, it's got a average guarded damage negation of 32.8. So again, we're a bit higher than the golden epitaph we're getting up, you know, that's actually pretty good as far as uh, straight swords go, especially considering most times you're going to be pairing one of these with a shield, which is going to help that a lot. And getting this one is actually decently simple. Uh, I should start with attributes, I guess. Uh, for this one, it does require an 18 intelligence, so that's uh, slightly higher than a lot of people who are going for a knight build, but it's uh, a good sword for it. Uh, 10 strength and 10 dexterity, so stats aren't ridiculous. Like I said, the intelligence is a little bit higher, but uh, uh, it does pair really well with magic, so I guess that makes sense. Um, doesn't have any passive effects. Finding it is decent easy so you can see we're over in the uh Liernia region and we're in the sub region over here the Liernia of the lakes region and uh the closest way to go if you've already unlocked it is the northern Le Liernia lakeshore uh right here is going to be uh the closest site of grace to where you want to go all right nope there it is uh i was just a little bit too far down so the exact location of where i've just located it on the map here as you can see here's the four belfries i'm on the road right over here so if you want to try to find this sword you got to come you get to this uh thing generally speaking i re recommend coming up from behind it so that way you can just kind of hop up and grab the sword and leave without engaging the entire convoy but that is where you get the carrion knight sword which is number three on this list so like i said i personally like the way this one looks and it's an excellent sword so i recommend using it at any point in the game. Uh, but that's all for three, so let's move on to number two. All right, and so for number two on this list, we have the regular crystal sword. So we have the rotten crystal sword at number uh, five. The regular crystal sword is at number two. And now I considered swapping these two around because they've got decently similar stats. Obviously, this one's got a little bit higher max attack power, but the rotten crystal sword does give you that uh, scarlet rot buildup. So if you're fighting larger enemies, I like the rotten crystal sword better, you know, ones that actually take longer to kill. But for smaller enemies and stuff that you're looking to kill in one or two hits, then this one is definitely the better option just because it's got, uh, you know, that edge as far as attack damage goes. I also like the way this one looks a little bit better because it's a lot cleaner blue look. Again, it's got uh, basically exactly the same look other than that though, because it's the same weapon, just one's corrupted. It's got a nice wide thick blade. It's decently long and the hilt is weirdly long for the length of the blade. As far as stats go on this one, it has a max attack power of 887 and an average guarded damage negation of 35.2. Uh, as far as stats required to wield this, uh, it requires strength of 13, intelligence of 15, and a dexterity of 10. So as far as strength and dex goes, not super high for us for a knight build, especially considering where you find it in the game. Uh, but intelligence, again, it could depend on where you're going. That might be a little bit out of reach, but I don't think so because 15 intelligence is pretty attainable. As far as where to get this goes, you're going to want to make your way over to the uh, village of the Albanorix, and you're going to want to just move your way through. So you can see I started at the uh, village of Albanorix grace site uh, and then you're going to want to move in through here so you, here you see a wooden bridge over here there's a well you're going to move past them and there's a body somewhere over here on the ground uh it's somewhere over here along this edge it's hard for me to say because obviously i've already looted everything but it's somewhere over here on one of the bodies and as you can see it does excellent damage i mean these are obviously not very tough enemies to kill but uh, one hitting him is always fun. So that is number two, the crystal sword. I know there's a lot of people that like doing their crystal sword builds, and obviously you can add some pretty cool Ashes of War upgrades to these things to make them pretty epic. But with all that in mind, that's number two. Let's move on to the number one best straight sword in this game. All right, and so for the number one best straight sword in this game, we have the Sword of Night and Flame. And now this one is one that even though it's super unrealistic looking, given how 
structurally unsound this blade would like likely be. I actually really like the way this one looks. As far as fantasy weapons go, this is the right way of doing fantasy because it's got a decently standard uh, cruciform style look to it. I mean, it's got a secondary hilt on the top, which I don't know exactly how useful that would be, but it uh, is a very interesting style and it looks very cool without looking really ridiculous like a lot of the weapons in the game do. So as far as looks go, this one is an excellent sword. As far as stats go, it's even better and it's, like I said, it's the best straight sword in the game or at least based on all the testing I've done and all the weapons that I've tested, this one comes out on top just every time. It's such a good sword. So this one has a max attack power of 935, so significantly higher than most of the other, uh, well, than all of the other ones on this list. It has an average guarded damage negation of 33.8, so not the highest on this list, but still pretty dang high for a straight sword. Uh, as far as stats required to use this one, it has a high intelligence requirement of 24, so a lot of knights aren't going to have their intelligence that high, and also faith of 24, so both of those, and dexterity and strength of 12. So it is actually a decently demanding weapon for most people, especially early game, but I think it's well worth it because this sword is just so epic. So like I said, stats and everything are great. It's also got some awesome magical powers that I'll demonstrate to you. But first, let's show you where to find it. So this one is, I would say it's easy to find, but that's because first you have to make your way through Carrion Manor. So you can see we're over here in Liurnia again. It's strange, most of these uh, swords are actually coming from this region. And you can see we're up here. So if you follow that road, actually from where we found uh, the Crystal Sword, <laughs> could start this list if you wanted to grab all three. You start down here in the village of the Albanorix. You make your way up through this road until you've uh, made it to about here where you'll come across that convoy where you can get the carrion sword and then you keep making your way up and you make your way all the way through Caria Manor until you get to the manor lower level and so if you've already done it then just go to this point but otherwise you have to make your way here uh, once you're here because you can see it's right there you come out onto this walkway and I'll just lead just straight to the sword now there's going to be some wraith enemies I usually just run past them they're not hard to kill but you also don't have to so you make your way down there you turn left there then you come up you take this path to the right and you can see there's like a little castle down there, so we're going to want to jump down onto that castle. Or tower, or whatever you want to call it. And then you drop down again, try not to fall down that hole. That happened to me once and I died, it was very unfortunate. Climb down this ladder, and this is a locked room, so from the outside you can't get to here. It'll be in this chest. Once you get in here, you can open the door, and you're free. So that is where you get this sword, but let me just demonstrate why this sword is one of my favorites. So we're over here at my personally favorite testing ground, and I'm just going to show you a couple other cool things the sword can do. So uh, if you want to use any of its special powers, you're going to want to wield it two-handed. So if you're using a controller like I am, uh, I'm using a PlayStation controller, it's going to be L2. And then you can use two different types of magical attack. The light attack shoots this, like, laser beam of magic energy that I just totally missed that guy with for some reason. And the heavy attack does this really powerful flame attack. I gotta get closer. I, that was weird. I don't think I've ever missed with that light attack before. There we go. That time I killed him. So as you can see, a pretty cool weapon. Uh, it's obviously, like I said, it's just a great sword all on its own. So if you just want to use it for... Uh, regular attacks. Here, I'll just show you her. Well, th that enemy wasn't the best example because these enemies are all such low levels. But it's got, it's got great stats for that. Strength attacks are definitely uh, an interesting lunge option for them. Um, but like I said, the thing that I really love that makes this sword so much fun to play around with is definitely those magical attacks. They're just so much fun. Uh, but yeah, that is uh, my total list of all five of the best straight swords in this game. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you like this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.